Welcome back to a Wednesday dose of Trek Yards. You come here every week to see cool things about ships, tech, sci-fi, and just our wonderful, amazing faces. But this week, something you haven't seen before, we hadn't seen before, maybe, possibly, and the world of Star Trek hadn't seen before, unless you're in the art department at the time, because it is still real. But it's not really out there. Stuart, help me, help them know what the hell I'm saying. No one ever knows what the hell you're saying but I'll try to interpret. So I think today we're going to be taking a look at uh, uh, early concept sketch, um, mm -hmm. something that never was actually finalized. Mm. But of course, this was done by the amazing John Eves, who always, his concept sketches are pretty much works of art unto <laughs> themselves. So um, I'd love to talk to him about this at some point mm -hmm. with him on the show. Which we have but before today... on several other concepts, but he's a busy, yes. busy man. So this is a sort of standalone one. Yes, absolutely. So, and today, this one really caught my eye when we were going through what we could talk about, mm -hmm. and I really like this one. So we're going to talk about the NX Alpha, or the uh, Warp 3 test ship that is uh, from Enterprise. Um, Captain Archer has his tale of the, I forget the guy's name, the test pilot that passed away that uh, flew this thing. But um, this is the ship we're going to be talking about, and uh, it's the, the early concept for it is stunning. I gotta say. And just so we know, the formal name of the ship before it was NX Alpha was NX Warp 3 Experimental Test Ship up after Phoenix before NX01 from the Archer Flashback episode. Always yes. known as First Flight. It's very different, isn't it? It is. It's very <laughs> aggressive looking, um, which I like. But, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I do have some issues with it as, for, as an experimental test ship. It mm. doesn't really work for me for that. Just for the simple fact that it's not simplistic enough. You know, for a, a, an early experimental test ship, you just want to get the, the parts you need to work. Basically, mm. in the cells, you want to keep everything else simple. There's a lot of really complex shapes and details on this, which would seem extraneous for an experimental test ship, in my mm. opinion. And obviously, the NX Alpha and Beta we saw was very much the Phoenix warp ship style, just sleeked out a bit and given the ability to both enter and re-enter atmosphere um, and I think the biggest reason for this concept not used and they go that direction was because they said we're going to reuse the cockpit from first contact to have some extra budget you know to save some budget I should say hence then now it's going to be rolled around that and you wouldn't just attach a little you know uh, rocket module cockpit onto this sort of design so that involved a redesign so this is obviously before they knew the direction um, now I'm wondering so we, you said it doesn't look like a test ship, but if you think about where it is in the timeline, we don't really know how good or bad Earth is, we just know that they can develop these things and there seems to be stability, um, but how much budget is there, you know, towards such a thing? Who say this is actually a freshly designed ship, rather than just a flying vehicle space lander craft that was given warp units to test. I mean, are they, you know, are they just testing the warp drive bubble just to show they can do it rather than building a ship that's because as we know, um, later designs in, in Star Trek, they refine the shapes which work better with the warp bubble and change warp geometry and stuff. And that's all part of it. But if you're just trying to get to warp three, maybe they're just blunt. And this obviously this is not in can at this point, but you know, blunt forcing it, you know, we need to create this big warp free bubble to prove we can do it and then we'll build a ship around the the, the, the style. I mean, what do you think now, point that out? Uh, I, I totally buy that because it does seem like it could be uh, another kind of transport or shuttlecraft that has the pylons and the engines slapped onto it. Because uh, as we know with the one from first flight that they actually used, the, the nacelles folded up and it was launched on a rail and then they unfolded, which again seems overly complicated but then so did the phoenix with the cells coming out of the but it makes sense if it's being launched from a missile silo right so hmm. um this one yeah if they, if, if the, these nacelles were attached you know in orbit or something of this hmm? fighter or patrol ship of some sort mm -hmm. i because i can see that it almost looks like a pontoon boat now that i'm th talking about it like a mm. speedboat design mm -hmm. yeah it does um, look like it just it looks too fragile to me to be an ex, like a does a test a test ship for such such an experiment. Um, but I that's mean, why I like the one they finally used because it's rocket shaped. You know, it's simple. Um, yes. And if they're, yeah. I mean, that's the thing about fr fragility is that we know that 
and Doug Drexler says this often, you know, the complaint when he was running his shop, someone came in and said the TOS Enterprise looks unrealistic because the pylons are too small, and you point out straight away, well, they're not too small, too thin, because guess what? It's the future they built. That was what they needed to make it work. Therefore, they're the perfect size. Ooh, advanced. If you look at the Phoenix then, Warp, um, Warp Alpha, I mean, the Phoenix connection points are so flimsy and teeny. I mean, that's surely, um, um, what was the word you used? Um, fragile. I mean, that's fragile. These, at least, are bulked out pylons. Although, I just realised, look at them, there's a slit in them like there is on the Discovery Enterprise. Well, on the one side, it appears that way. The other side seems solid with something running along there. Um, could be there's each side is different, like a little asymmetry going on. But oh, or the yeah. like flaps that maybe like to help with wind resistance, because there is little connection points on the left hand side one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very small, but I mean, I never noticed that. But yeah, I mean, e either one kind of works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I do. I do like the. Uh, the off-center array, the uh, yeah. sensor. I think that's really cool, or deflector, whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> don't know if they were quite deflectors at this point. Now that middle shape, I mean, you you expand that up. That looks like its own ship in itself. That mm -hmm. that little bulbous ship. I, I think we've actually seen that particular shape before. And to um, be fair, if you doubled the uh, but back two pieces and made them and flipped them so there's two in the bottom as well. Very similar to an Axiega concept for first contact, one of the unused ones. The four in a cell one. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, what, what I see from this is that obviously they're trying to link things into things, and that's tricky when you're reinventing the earliest wheel. You know, it should just be this circle, but it's got to be other things to imply it's older than an, a normal modern circle. What do you do? You know, I mean, the fact there is, it is so pontoon. Is that that super hard, hard ass link to the NX saying, well, let's pull that structural element out, slap it in here, and then just make this really simple ship around it? Because, I mean, it is like, why do you possibly need these two pointy things? Why is there so much negative space? Why is there so, like, it's, it's. Um, well, going back to like, I know John is inspired a lot by. M m well, modern day, but like 1960s experimental mm. Um, mm. planes and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, and one of the, even with the space program, one of the things you wanted to do was reduce weight. Take out whatever weight you can. Yeah. Um, mm. So negative space would definitely mm. accomplish that. Um, why have extra bulkheads and just, if you don't need it, uh, cut it out, save your weights, yeah. you know, actually get, and I think yeah. that might be some of the reasoning for that, yeah. uh, which I do like. I do like that he's inspired by the 1960s experimental um, uh, projects because there was some really cool stuff that mm -hmm. looked even today if, if you looked at it it looks super futuristic so um, that's really a nice tie-in and I think yes to reduce weight that would be ideal um, but I do like the one they finally went with just because it does tie into the Phoenix and it mm -hmm. seems more like a, just an extension of that program um, this seems like something completely new uh, mm. which I think after the tests were successful then they might have built something like this to maybe ramp up the speed a little bit, refine things. Mm. But I think as a test vehicle, this is a little bit too refined and too sleek, if I will, if I dare say that word. <laughs> well, I mean, what if this is taking it a step further? So you had the Warp 1 Phoenix, Warp 2 Unknown, Warp 3, obviously an X-Alpha, Warp 4... Um, was a real starship, was Franklin, mostly. Warp 5 was NX, la la la. What if this is actually just the warp two, a, warp, a Warp 2 ship? Retrofitted to be, like, to test the Warp 3. For example, it could be like a Warp Fighter, um, you know, to get to Alpha Centauri, to get somewhere else. One or two, you can see how big the, the potential cockpit could be. Two, three people max. If you need to send a, you know, a message to this other place... You got a warp two fighter. Um, I mean, the Phoenix can can generate warp, and it's super small. So there's no reason why they couldn't build a also small warp capable ship. And then they just you know re engine re, re add on and tweak it to make it warp three. And then they can even cut out the bits you said to make negative space. You know, redesign the middle to alleviate as much weight as possible. And now it's a warp three test ship. Because you got to what is the first warp two ship? You know, why why from one to three? basically identical in terms of function is warp two is warp two ship another phoenix style i mean you'd think yeah which is why kind of nice to be three was more of a ship 
than than this. Mm. Yeah. Um, well, going back to kind of what you said there, um, cutting out these, cutting out the weight, making this negative space to me, almost seems makes the ship feel uh, weaker structurally. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how good their structural integrity fields were at the time because they weren't used to high warp, so I can't imagine the structural integrity fields were anything too complex. Although that deflector, because the Phoenix hasn't got a visible deflector, that might be the the, the difference. By that's the new addition, because it's not integrated the same as you would normally find. So it could be like an add-on, like shit. We need a mm. we need a def- dedicated deflector system. You know, add one. And we in. can't put it in the middle because, judging by the size of those people, there's not a lot of room in that cockpit. Yeah. Um, so we need to put it there. Yeah, that works for me. But I don't know. It just it seems a little too. Right, right, the right brothers playing. Well, yeah. <laughs> thin, thin, and fragile. Yeah, um, I'm glad they went with what they did. This I would still like to see though, uh, as you know, a TOS era fighter or even a mm. TNG fighter. Put new nacelles on it, make mm. it more modern. Um, I just like the shapes that are here. And again, it goes back to that, you know, um, aircraft vibe that we get from John. I yeah. love jets, and I love this design because of that so and to be fair if you did have those nacelle slits be slits this would be a perfect discovery era warp fighter sure yeah you can imagine a squadron of eight of these just warping out and attacking for some reason a warp fighter like it's a really like it it works in multiple eras because it's just all good shapes although i don't, I don't know if you agree but do you get the sense that the the we, the we assumed cockpit piece feels like it can jettison designed to be in a housing, it just jets them out. Uh, maybe that center part, but with the way it attaches to the struts and stuff, I don't know. I mean, it, it's, anything's possible, yes, but I think there's that that oval shape on the top, which is probably mm. the main seat, which probably could eject, mm. uh, would be my thinking anyway. I would assume that would be essential for this sort of craft. I was trying to work out how it might be integrated. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, you'd want some kind of safety mechanism for a, a test ship, for sure. Although, my God, would you want to jump out? Would you want to jettison out of a ship at warp and then manually, physically, drop to sublight with us? Just you between, you know, you in a spacesuit. I mean, my God, well, that would be bad. That's what I was talking about with structural integrity fields. I don't know what their inertial dampeners were like at this time. I'm sure they weren't that advanced. Yeah. So you might turn to goo, but I don't know. There was a time in Victorian times where scientists <laughs> speculated that the human body couldn't travel past 60 kilometers an hour without liquefying. So, I mean, maybe we can handle those kind of stresses. I, I don't know. I would love to see their scientific research on that, see their papers <laughs> of, of all their tests, the proof. Um, you know, hor- horses can do it, sure. But people, different organs, yeah. We've done multiple tests over in a place you've never heard of with people you don't know. It happened. Um, but last, last thought though, those warp nacelles, we haven't touched upon those as a in between prequel earlier. Like, what do you think design wise? They seem a little too advanced to me. Um, the shapes that are incorporated there, especially with the front, uh, it just it seems almost more refined than the actual NX01. Um, I don't know, I like the shapes that are incorporated here, even at the back, the way that the, you know, I don't know, I just, it's, it's, it seems too advanced for what it is. Um, but again, it is just a concept. This is just first idea. They would have refined it a little bit, maybe. So, yeah, for me, they feel like a interesting, like obviously they're they're, they're good. They're good warp cells. They are. Uh, oh yeah, different dimensionality. I love the the extra fin that goes into them. Mm-hmm. I think that that the, it balances very very nicely on this. I'm surprised there's no visible warp grills, given that Phoenix did have them, and they made a very distinct point. Even though they didn't quite would necessarily make the most sense to have, you know. The blue bits. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. they even had bassards. It's like, are you really going to build bassards with your limited resources on this ship? Mm, don't know. If it was just visual cues. And so it's a bit weird to see them not in this version, and I don't even know if they would work in this version. That said, if it's a test version, as we said for TOS, it's like they've armoured it because the radiation, the energy output is so much higher than more refined versions that you have to keep it in, in enclosed to be, to be safe. So this being a completely enclosed version is certainly quite interesting. Um, mm. Yeah. No, I, I, my final thought on this thing yeah. um, is 
I I love the design. I think it's fantastic for a modern day fighter or some kind of anime fighter or something like that. This works beautifully. Yeah. Um, just changing the cells a bit to make it less Star Trek. Mm. And I'm glad, that, like I said earlier, I'm glad they finally went with what they did because it's more of a tie-in with what had come before and mm-hmm. just an extension of that program. Mm-hmm. And also the fact that it's not as advanced looking as this. This seems yep. more advanced than what it should be. Uh, so that's kind of where I stand with this. I love the design, but I'm kind of glad they went with something else. Although I would like to see this at some point refined. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, for me, it, it's, it's a great design. It's not a test warp ship unless it's a, you know, we're going to take this ship, make it a warp ship or update it to warp three, but it does feel like a really cool warp fighter. That that's, you know, for that, I think it works tremendously well. Um, but it's definitely cool, and I'm glad we looked at it. Yeah, it almost yeah. feels like a, it, it belongs in a reimagined Buck Rogers series as the <laughs> Thunder Fighter because it's got those two points at the front. Yeah. Um, that would work for me. But <laughs> anyway, on that note, mm-hmm. uh, we'd like to thank you guys for watching. If mm-hmm. you like the video, click like, subscribe, click the bell icon, do all that jazz. Leave a comment down below. What do you think about this ship? Mm-hmm. And by all means, head on over to the Facebook page and yep. join the conversation at Trek Yards, mm-hmm. the Trek Yards group there. Or, you know, hang out with us whenever you can, because we do lives all the time now. Yes, and of course, support us on Patreon, the YouTube service. It helps YouTubers like us to keep going. We direct donation at trekyards.com. Click the donate button, and it just goes to our general account. Or, like Stuart said, those YouTube lives. We do them twice a week. Join in, have some fun, super chat if you'd like, and that all really, really supports the channel and lets us do more things like this. I bring on designers, let it down the line, and just the cool Trek stuff we like to do. Mm-hmm. And don't forget, guys, we just started a Trek Yards Discord service. The mm. link is in the description below. It's already popping. People are loving it. Uh, it was much requested, so mm-hmm. visit that as well. And we'll see you next time. Until then, I'm Captain Foley. I am Connor Huggins. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys.